a lot of people know your story. Um, and it would, and it's what one, if one hears it, one would suggest it was a very tragic, sad story. But as we look at you today, we see that it was a challenge that you met and succeeded. Richard, um, through an accident, um, became blind when he was uh, 16. So my question to you to start us off, Richard, is what do you account for the reason and the ability for you to be able to meet that challenge, go to college, graduate from law school, by the way, the first blind student to graduate from Duke, um, become a very successful attorney, now starting two nonprofits and three for-profits, having the entrepreneurial spirit and the, and the social consciousness that you do. What happened back then that helped you get to where you are today? Well, thank you for letting me uh, share a few thoughts. And I will make this the Reader's Digest version because we do have some important uh, people to hear from uh, before the night is over. Uh, on, and this is unrehearsed um, interview, by the way. Uh, <clears throat> from a uh, reflective uh, perspective, Steve, after I uh, spent uh, a year or eternity or more uh, traveling from hospital to hospital, uh, searching for the cure uh, to save my sight, which I will never uh, forget or uh, not admire uh, my parents' strength for doing that, which I think now, as a parent, uh, how difficult that must have been for them. And here I thought I was the one suffering uh, through all the uh, doctors and surgeries and such. But uh, I think now that uh, I came home and decided to stay in my room uh, the rest of my life. We lived in a big brick, brick house, and I got to move downstairs so that I would be near everybody in the family uh, quarters. And uh, from there, uh, I decided uh, this is very nice, and I could deal with this. It was very, very manageable. Uh, as I look forward from that bit of security, I can't help but think uh, sitting there uh, and doing things that would be brought to me from school and elsewhere, it never, never occurred to me that I could or would graduate from a high school, uh, much less uh, get through college. Uh, those dreams had faded so quickly in the darkness of that room. Uh, but along the way, as I managed to get to college, I decided uh, I needed that recluse even more. So as student events would be called, this was a small 1,000 men Benedictine school, uh, I would uh, go through a routine where as everyone was getting ready to go to the student hall or the quad or wherever the event may be, I would find my way to the uh, lavatory and stay there until they cleared out. And then when I heard nothing anymore, I would come out. Mm -hmm. um, I can't uh, forget one evening I was sneaking back out of the uh, lavatory and I heard this voice and he said, oh, I've met you in class before and I'm Ernest. I said, well, Ernest, why aren't you uh, at the student union tonight. He said, well, I'm a seminarian. We're not allowed to go to those uh, events. I said, well, um, you want to visit for a while? So we spoke. Ernest uh, stayed with me as my supporter, caregiver, if you will, all through college. Uh, he even took leave from the seminary as I moved on uh, to law school. And uh, I think then, you know, what, what a blessing that was the handoff occurred in law school uh, where uh, a young man saw me uh, in line getting books with Ernest. He said, uh, I saw you at orientation. I'm in your class. I said, uh, yeah, I am, uh, first year. And he said, you know, um, would you like me to help orient you around the library? I've got to learn it myself. Those helping hands mm -hmm. that I always declined, I think, uh, is where uh, the strength and courage uh, came from. Back to the room for just a second. 
um, in that room where I decided to spend the rest of my life. I never uh, thought I would leave until one Friday afternoon when two of my friends came by and said, hey, tonight, let's sneak you out the window. We'll <laughs> go riding down to the beach, and uh, when you come home, we'll put you back to the window, and nobody will ever have to know you left. Well, I don't know. I had said no a hundred times before, but that night I said okay, and I uh, put my shoes and sandals and uh, T-shirt, shorts on. Uh, I climbed out the window. They caught me on the way down. We got in the car, and on the way home, I thought for a brief moment, um, this isn't as bad as I thought it was. Okay. <laughs> so, so I think the strength comes from those that extend the helping hand.